This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Speedy trial has now been waived. There's a lot of directions this could all possibly go in eventually, hopefully making it to court. Where do you see this going right now, Robin, in the immediate future, now that there's not that tight October deadline to meet? I got to tell you, if I'm ever doing anything really bad in life, I'm going to hire this defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Every week, we just when you don't think there's anything else to talk about, she does something else new. I mean, she is throwing, it seems like she's throwing the kitchen sink at everything. Where do I see it going? I see her continually trying to do all she can to save his life. I literally, that's the only thing that strikes me in this yep. is that they're afraid of the death penalty. I, again, boy, it's so easy to take our own confirmation biases and place it on others without actually knowing them. Sure. But throughout this, as we talked about last week, all I can think of is this father trying to save his son's life. That's all I keep thinking of this. What I'm wondering is who's in control here of the motions that are coming out? Is it Ann Taylor? Is it Koberger? Is it a combination of the two? Because there's been some where we look at this and go, damn, Ann Taylor is really representing him well. There's been some other moments, too, where you go, where are you coming up with this stuff? And this could really hurt credibility in general here. I'm just curious as to where you think and how those dynamics are playing out behind the scenes. You know, it's a really interesting question, and I'll give you a frame of reference for myself. And, you know, I've written numerous books, and I've worked with writers before, and I've done them independently. Yeah. And what strikes me in this, and it has for a while now, is it's as if he's the author and she's his writer, his hired writer. Uh -huh. And what I mean by that is she's the one with the expertise, but she can only work with what he gives her. Yeah, And I think that she has the expertise in defending cases like this, obviously, but he keeps giving her nuggets of things that he thinks from his context are really good because he's not unintelligent, but he also, as we've said, he doesn't have the reps. Yeah. She has the reps. And so I think she keeps trying to take what he gives her as the author of this story and trying to spin it as a writer to serve what they're ultimately trying to accomplish. Are you referring to the excuse of like, I'm just, I like to drive, tell them that'll hold up. And some of the other kind of bizarre ones, maybe they planted evidence, you know, things like that. Things that I really wouldn't expect Ann Taylor to say, because it doesn't really follow her path of the way she's represented people historically. Absolutely. And I think what they... <laughs> It's hard to see him kind of getting wound up emotionally, but we know he has, you yeah. know, especially with the anger emotions and things like that. I can imagine them sitting there and him getting animated about all the things that he thinks are great alibis that he pre thought in his mind and in the moment, you know, gets her wound up too, maybe. And, yeah. but again, when you're working with very little, you're going to make the most out of you can out of nothing. So I think that's what she's doing. And, you know, hats off to her doing her job really well. What's your thoughts to on the extra time here now that exists? This could be looked at in either way, specifically in this case. I'm curious as to where you think it's going to go. Is it going to be beneficial? But Anne was for a while there trying to get some small delays, but keep the clock moving so we could get to trial. That obviously now they've given up on that idea. Now it's just, okay, however much time this takes, it takes. With all the concern about potentially having a tainted jury and stories out there that are painting him in a bad light, they don't like pictures of him. What are your thoughts here on this? Did, is this a good thing for the defense to have the, a longer time window now between this and hitting trial? So I'm using a confirmation bias when, when thinking in terms of this, and I'm thinking in terms of my confirmation bias of everything she's doing is trying to keep him alive. Yep. And I think as, as the ludicrousness of some of these ideas that she and her, I mean, he and her are coming up with, as those are kind of flushing out and going nowhere, let's let go of the speedy trial. Let's make it as long as possible now, because that'll keep him alive even longer. And maybe something else. Will I think she's exhausted everything she can uh, and throwing it at the wall, seeing that's nothing really is sticking too well. And since that's not hell, let's spread it out even longer now. That way, maybe I can come up with other things in this more time I have. That's sure. the only, that's what struck me during this.
This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.